If you found the video helpful, make sure you leave your comments and thumbs up below. And also, let me know what you want to see in a future video, and I'll do my best to cover it for you. All right, guys, I'll see you soon. Cut! Jesse, come get me out of this shit. Oh my God. Oh, there you go. I don't know how the other fitness guys do this shit. What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, Athleanx.com. Uh, today I want to talk to you about, oh screw it, get the arms, let them be free, however you want to hold them. Guys, the fact of the matter is today we're talking about bro science, more bro science. And today the bro science may not be what you think it is, because a lot of guys that follow the science of training will say that these days that muscle soreness is not a requirement for muscle growth. In fact, muscle soreness has nothing to do with muscle growth. And that's where they took it too far because that's not true. That is bro science. The fact of the matter is if you want to build muscle, muscle soreness could be one of the major ways that you're going to do it. As a matter of fact, it may be one of the easiest ways for you to do it. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to cover the three ways that your body tends to create muscle growth. And one of them is related to muscle soreness. Two of them don't necessarily have to have it. And that's where the whole saying comes from in the first place that, oh, you don't need it. Oh, you know, you don't, it's not a requirement for that, but it eventually becomes necessary because these other two pathways might dry up for you. So what we talk about is this third pathway, if we jump all the way down to the bottom, muscle mechanical damage. Okay, we're talking about eccentric overload, literally creating damage to the muscle or, as some research will say these days, to the connective tissue around the muscle. It depends on what you believe is the actual mechanism of damage, but we all agree there's some level of damage occurring to that area of the muscle that you trained. It has to grow back bigger and stronger, and we do that through eccentric overload. And that is what causes this delayed onset muscle soreness that we are familiar with, that we say, oh, this is what I need to get to build muscle, and this is where people are now saying, no, you don't need it. Well, they're saying you don't need it because you've got two other mechanisms that actually lead to growth that don't have the associated soreness with it. The first one is a progressive overload using either tension as the driver or volume as the driver. So what are we talking about here? The tension is literally adding weight to the bar every time you train. So every time you train, if you can continue to add tension, add more weight to the, to the bar, which makes the muscles that you have working here work harder and helps them to get stronger, we know we can increase the size of your muscles as your strength increases, as will your size over time. However, there's a major problem with that. We can't keep doing that forever. We can't keep adding weight to the bar. It's easier when you're just starting out in your training, but ultimately that pathway will dry up. You want to always try to do that. And you always want to tr continue to lift heavy when you can in your training sessions, but you want to make sure that you don't rely on this as your only mechanism because when you can't add more tension, then the next thing you might try is volume. You might say, all right, well, if, if I'm not going to be able to add more weight to the bar, I can do more of what I'm doing. And as we do that, we start to see that that maybe isn't necessarily the best way either. And I know a lot of people like to rely on this as their main mechanism these days. This is sort of the preferred, the preferred uh, means of getting bigger and stronger. However, as a physical therapist, I have to look at it from another side. I have to look at it from the standpoint of increased volume is not necessarily always a good thing. The number one problem with people that are lifting these days is overuse injuries. And I'm not talking about injuries like I got hurt, I snapped my pec tendon or I tore uh, a patellar tendon. That's not what it is. It's that really sort of low key over time, my God, my shoulder's starting to hurt a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. My elbow's starting to hurt. I have tendonitis in my outside of my elbow here. I have tendonitis maybe in my knee. All those things are coming because we're accruing volume and volume creates overload, but volume will also create overuse. And if you keep relying on this, especially if you're not using spot on, dead on nails, perfect form, that will start to rear its ugly head a lot faster. If we go the metabolic way here, the metabolic way is actually that when we create the byproducts of training. So we have metabolites that are produced, we have hydrogen ions, we have lactate. All this stuff is being produced as we accrue higher and higher volume. We can use a lot lower loads here and we can still get this intense burning in the muscles and if we continue to train through that and train through that pain and train through that burn, it's been shown that you can actually uh, create muscle hypertrophy using a lot lighter loads. That's actually very encouraging for a lot of people because they don't need to rely on this all the time. 
But this is very difficult training. Not a lot of people have the fortitude to try to put up with this discomfort when they're training, the metabolic stress. This is also, ironically, how one of the newer ways that people always ask about training, uh, occlusion training. Occlusion training relies on this. Very light loads, create an occlusion in the muscle, don't let it breathe, more or less, continue to al allow the accumulation of that pump and don't let it go. And that re uh, increases the met metabolites that are being collected in the working muscle. And again, it starts to, this, this, uh, um, this cascade of events that will uh, ultimately lead to muscle growth. So continuous tension or the use of contracted position exercises. So you can take an exercise like a spider curl that trains you in this contracted position. The most tension, peak tension occurs at the contracted position of the biceps. And I can crank away in that range using lighter loads, increase this. But like I said, you better be prepared to really resist that burn and train through it if you want to get the benefits of this. So now let's go back to you don't need pain, you don't need soreness to create muscle growth. You might need it. If you dry up here, you might go to volume. If this starts to cause a problem, potentially, in just the way you feel and breaking down other areas that make training even more difficult for you. I've seen it a million times. This could become a problem. If you go here, this might already become a problem for this. But if you try this and maybe you don't even have the ability to do this or string together multiple workouts like this, or you're consistently using too light a weight because this is the only mechanism you're using, you're not dipping into this, then where do you go from there? Where you go is you have to start including some mechanical damage via eccentric overloads. And we can do that, and the reason why this is the, one of the best ways is because it's one of the easiest things to do. You don't have to have this, you just have to slow down the weight that you're lifting here. Control it, eccentrically allow it to start applying this high level of tension as your muscle is stretching and elongating. You can feel the effects of what this is doing to the muscle as you're doing every rep. So now, what is the danger to this? The danger is you would never rely on this on, on its own. Because if you continue to do this and you produce your, your delayed onset muscle soreness that leaves you debilitated and unable to come back and train, then where are you left? Then you're not able to train as frequently because you feel as if you're too sore. So when you look at the whole picture here, it's wrong to say that muscle soreness is not a way to, to, to build muscle. That's wrong. It's not true. It's one of the three ways that builds muscle. R muscle soreness is not a prerequisite for muscle growth. That's right, because you can have other pathways. But ultimately, you're never going to get away from the fact that the muscle soreness path, the one associated with damage via eccentric overload, is going to be part of the equation for you. So the bottom line is all three of these mechanisms need to be part of your equation. You need to figure out how you're going to start training heavy. I can tell you a quick way to even test this with a touch-up set. You can it, it essentially feel how neurologically you can already lift more than you think you can right now. Do a touch-up set. If you're going to do a, a, a six to eight rep uh, set, take your five rep max, do two reps of it. Now go do your six to eight rep set after you've recovered for a couple minutes. You'll instantly feel stronger. You've turned on the neurological awakening of your muscle that will allow you to lift more easily, that heavier weight more easily. But again, even neurological gains, those end too. So for all these reasons, you have to mix them all up. But don't say that muscle soreness has no effect on your ability to grow muscle. That's just not true. That's complete and utter bro science. Guys, if you're looking for a program that knows how to mix all these up at the right time to allow you to benefit from all of them, because you're going to need them all, like I said. You're going to have to lift heavy at some time. You're going to have to increase your volume. You're going to have to increase your tension. You're going to have to do metabolic exercises. You're going to have to use continuous tension. You're going to have to know within the range of the exercises when you're going to work the contracted position, when you're going to work the stretch position, when you're going to work the mid-range. You're going to have to have mechanical damage and overload. You're going to have to have a, a, a respect for lowering your eccentrics slowly and in control. All this matters, all this stuff, guys, and when, at the end of the day, it's all part of the big picture. I have a whole program over at AthleanX.com. In fact, all of our programs are based on the principles of training science that work. You can find the one that's right for you over at AthleanX.com right now. Click on the link below this video. Use our program selector to help you do that. In the meantime, if you found this video helpful, make sure you leave your comments and thumb, thumbs up below. We'll cover more bro science here in the future. Let me know what other things you'd like to see us cover. Give me some ideas. I'd be happy to go over them for you. All right, guys. See you soon.